So this is section 2.8, which is solving inequalities in one variable. We're going to talk about polynomial inequalities, rational inequalities, other inequalities, and applications. Okay, so with polynomial inequalities, the important thing to know if, the, if you see the greater than zero symbol or greater than or equal to symbol, greater than or equal to symbol, that means that it's asking you where is your function positive. If you see where it says the function is less than or less than or equal to, it's asking us where is our function negative. So for our first example, we're going to find where a polynomial is 0, positive, or negative. So we have f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 4 squared. So we're going to use a number line, and we're going to make a positive-negative chart for this one to determine... Um, where it's zero positive and negative. So this one's already factored for us, which is nice. So we can tell that the zeros are where each factor set equal to zero. So that would be x equals negative three and x equals positive four, and that positive four has a multiplicity of two. Okay, so then we're gonna make a positive negative chart so what that means is we're going to place negative 3 and 4 on kind of a number line with not any other numbers here. So we know that both of these equals 0. Those are our zeros. So we want to find out what's happening in the three sections that are created by those two zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to just plug in numbers that fall in each of those categories. So like if I pick a number down here um, to the far left group, maybe negative 4. So if I plug negative 4 into my original equation up here, it would be negative 4 plus 3, that's going to be negative. Negative 4 minus 4, that's also going to be a negative squared, which turns positive. So we'd have a negative times a positive, which is negative. Then I'm going to pick a number in between negative 3 and 4, like 0. So if I plug 0 in up here, that's going to be a positive times a negative squared, which would be positive. So it would be a positive times a positive, which is positive. Then I'm going to pick a number bigger than 4, like 5. So 5 plus 3 would be 8. 5 minus 4, so it would be a positive times a positive, which is also positive. So we can plug numbers in to determine whether or not it's going to be positive or negative, make a little chart like this, and then that's going to allow us to determine the intervals of positive and negative. So this was our part A, zeros. Then part B is positive. So no, it's not, notice it's not saying positive or equal to zero, it's just saying positive. So um, that means we're going to use curve brackets for our zeros. So this would be, positive would be from negative 3 to 4, and 4 to infinity. And I know it's tempting to just say negative 3 to infinity, infinity, but the reason we're putting the 4 in there is because 4 is not positive, it's 0, and there's a difference between that. So that's why we're writing it that way. So then C is asking where is it negative? So negative would be from negative infinity to negative 3. So again, that's how we use the positive negative chart to determine the areas where it's either 0, positive, or negative. Okay, next example is finding a polynomial inequality graphically. So we're going to find x cubed minus 6x squared is less than or equal to 2 minus 8x. So the first thing I need to do on this is I need to get it compared to zero, so I need to move it all to the same side. So this would become x cubed minus 6x squared. I'm going to add the 8x and subtract 2, and that's going to ask us where is that less than or equal to zero. So this right here, the fact that, oh, I should point to the inequality sign. What am I doing? Okay, that right there tells us where is it negative or equal to zero, okay? So we can graph this. You can go to Desmos. You can type in this inequality. You can just type in this part right here. 
Um, you don't need to type in the less than or equal to zero. So if we type in that, um, you get a graph that looks like over here to the right. So the three zeros on this graph are not um, rational numbers. So you're gonna get decimal values. So we're gonna kind of round to the nearest um, hundredth here. So our zeros are located at Three two, one point four six, and four point two one. Okay, so I'm gonna get my highlighter here. So we're looking for where is this graph negative or equal to zero. So this part of the graph will be negative, and this part of the graph would be negative. So we need to describe that with our intervals. So that means that it's going to be negative infinity to 0.32. And I'm using a square bracket on this one because it's asking if it's or equal to zero. So at this point, it is equal to zero. So that's why I'm using a square bracket. And then between 1.46 and 4.21. So we're using square brackets on all of those numbers because they are zeros, and the fact that it's less than or equal to zero is why we're putting the square brackets there. Okay, next one. Creating a sign chart for rational functions. So we have r of x is x plus 3 times x minus 5 divided by 5x minus 2. So we're going to determine the values that make it zero, the values that make it undefined, then we're going to find positive and negative intervals. So zero, zero is looking at the numerator. What two values would make the numerator equal zero? That would be negative three and positive five. And then undefined. Undefined is what makes the denominator equal zero, so that would be two-fifths. So if we took the denominator, set it equal to zero, we would get two-fifths. So when we make our little chart here, we're going to have three numbers this time. We're going to have negative three, two-fifths, and five. So again, the negative three and the five are zeros. Two-fifths would be our vertical asymptote, so it can't... Um, can't be two-fifths, so it's technically, we're using it as a number of interest here. Okay, so again, we're going to plug numbers in. So negative four, if I plug in negative four, that'd be a negative times a negative on the, in the top, which would be a positive, and it would be negative in the denominator. So that'd be positive divided by negative, which is negative. If I plug in zero, which is between negative three and two-fifths, so that'd be positive times a negative in the numerator, which would be negative, and then it would be negative in the denominator, so a negative divided by a negative is positive. Then if I pick something like four, that would be positive times a negative, so negative in the numerator, and it would be positive in the denominator, so it'd be negative divided by a positive, so it'd be negative. And then if I picked a number like 10, that would make all values positive, so it would be positive. Okay, so if we want to say where is r of x greater than zero, that would be um, our two intervals of positive values. So that would be between negative three and two fifths, and then from five to infinity. And I'm using square or curved brackets on this one because I'm not asking where is it or equal to. I'm just asking where is it positive. Okay, and then where is r of x less than zero? Would be from negative infinity to negative three, and from two fifths to five. Okay. Here's our last one: solving an inequality involving a radical. So what we want to do on this one is we want to still start with finding our zeros. So we have two factors here, even though they're not both in parentheses, both parts we know that with the um, 
zero product property, we know for multiplying two things, one of them has to be zero. So we can set both parts equal to zero, so that would be x equals positive two and x equals negative one. Those are my two values that are gonna make this equal zero. And so I am going to set up a positive negative chart again. So we have negative one and we have two. So if we plug in a number less than negative one, it's gonna be okay for the x minus two, but it's not gonna be okay for the square root. So any value less than negative one is going to be undefined. Is a zero and that's a zero. Okay, then if I pick a number between negative one and two, like zero, that'd be a negative times a positive, so it'd be negative. And then if I pick a number bigger than two, it'd be positive times a positive, so it'd be positive. So then this, again, we look at the symbol. The symbol says less than or equal to zero. So that means we're looking for negative values and we're also including the zeros in this. So we would say that our solution here, so where f of x less than or equal to be negative one and two with square brackets because it can be equal to zero. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.